Hey, Lab Coats. It's Tristan, and we've got Travis, Tom, with Elevated REM. He's a badass Facebook marketer. If you're not using him, I feel really sorry for you. So um, at the end, just hit him up. Travis, what's your website, bro, so people can go and sign up for your coaching? Hey, everyone. Um, if, if you want to know about our services or any free training or, or just some great video tutorials on uh, Facebook marketing for your real estate business, go to TravisTom.com. Uh, last name is spelled T-H-O-M. So TravisTom.com and you'll get an amazing amount of information that can get you kick-started on whatever you want to do with Facebook. And a lot of that's for free, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. There's a, there's, there's a lot. There's a lot. Sweet. All right, man. Let's get right into it. The market shifted in a lot of places in the U.S. And the market is shifting in other places. Most people are seeing it. There's a lot of price drops and sellers are saying, what can we do to market our homes better? What can you do as an agent? And obviously the agents are saying, well, drop the price, but they don't want to hear it. So tell me, how can we use Facebook in a shifting market to help our homes sell or even just to do better marketing for ourselves? Great question. So there's a, there's a lot of tactics that still work. And uh, firstly, Tristan, thank you for having me on. Um, no, you're not welcome, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, you know, there's a lot of tactics and strategies that are still working really well. But of course, you know, absorption rates are taking longer. Um, there's, you know, certain things that are um, creating an environment where listings just aren't selling as fast. So there's several opportunities that kind of come into play with that. Um, as just mentioned, I'm a, a Facebook marketing strategist, and today we're going to go over some of the strategies that we're doing for our clients, and some strategies that are um, think we think that are, are a great idea to go ahead and execute. So, in a shifting market, you know, there's kind of a big question, right? Which is then, what should you do? What strategies are still going to work? What strategies aren't going to work? And so, we're going to just give you a little bit of a handful of different things and tactics that we're uh, going over. So one of, one of them is that, you know, with every listing that you have, um, you should create a walled garden around every single listing. And Tristan, you, you remember this one. This was my, actually one of your listings. Oh, dude, I remember that. Yeah, that was uh, one of our listings. That's actually across the street from me. Yeah, it's a beautiful living room. Thanks, dude. The guy owned like all these tennis shoes. He's like, he works for Converse. The guy was awesome. Oh, nice. Yeah. Well, you know, when... When you have a listing, a lot of people just post it out there, you know, and that's good to just go ahead and, you know, create a post, some, some uh, direct link to whatever the listing might be. But a good majority of the time, it's an opportunity to create a walled garden around every listing that you have. So if you have coming soon, uh, you know, capabilities within your MLS, you should create a coming soon Facebook lead ad create a just listed lead ad and create a just sold lead ad, right? All these different phases, right? There's typically three different phases when you have a listing. So if you can make sure that you really create this walled garden to capture their name, email, and the information using Facebook lead ads, this is going to create more opportunity for you to get buyers, right? Because right now, if you have the buyers, you're probably going to have more of, well, the upper hand in the market. Uh, because listings are taking a little bit longer. So those buyers, you're stacking up your pipeline and then eventually you can make some sort of marriage match between them and another listing that you might have. So as one of the things that we really suggest is maximizing every life stage of every listing that you have, creating a lot of noise about it so other sellers and other buyers see your activity. So if there's people that are actually having a stagnant listing on the market within your area, and they say, you know what, I see that Tristan is marketing his property, you know, they're doing just listed, it's coming soon, just sold, and my agent isn't doing that for me, you're probably going to win more listings, but you're also going to win more buyers just for the sake of actually taking a little bit more extra effort with your marketing and using Facebook lead ads like this. Oh, I have a question there, sorry. Yes. Um, the question is, I know that some agents create a single property website and they use that as part of their ad in Facebook. So do you recommend that 
the sign up page for a single property website have have that little pop up that's saying, "Hey, give me your information," or do you recommend it to be like a lead ad? What's better? Um, well, you know, so Facebook had came up with a few different penalties um, when you're driving traffic to external websites outside of the Facebook platform. And one of them, um, there's about 25 of them, uh, 25 kind of core ones. One of them is that if there's any pop-ups. So if you send people to a website that has a pop-up, um, you're, you're going to get a little penalized within the Facebook ad auction. You're not going to get notified about it. You're not going to get an email. There's nothing that's going to actually tell you that you're being penalized. You just have to know how to read the data to understand that, well, your click through rate, um, well, it might be a little bit lower. Uh, your cost per click might be a little bit higher. Your cost per thousand impressions might be higher and your reach might be a little bit lower in terms of how the ad is feeding out. So what I suggest is sending people to an external website, make sure that you, you don't have a pop-up, right? That actually you know, demands information. Make sure it's really kind of embedded within the UX, UI design, right? The user experience design. So that that way it doesn't red, you know, it's not a red flag to Facebook and say, hey, uh, you're sending people to a page that has pop-ups on it and, and it feels kind of spammy. Um, but they still work. Single property websites, work really well. Landing pages work still, you know, really well. Um, the industry standard conversion rate is about 20% on landing pages, but with Facebook lead ads, it's a little bit easier to set up, right? You're not having to create all of this different information, adding all these photos, um, you know, depending on if you're building it or if you're just driving people to an IDX landing page, it's about your preferred preference about how you want to set it up. I really enjoy Facebook lead ads and I know a lot of our clients do one because the cost per lead um, is typically a lot less and the ability to create it and then automate it to be able to connect lead ad to Zapier, to a CRM, all of those things is, uh, gives you all these tremendous amount of capabilities to automate your follow up and, you know, text messages, all those kind of key things and to retarget people that opened up your Facebook lead ad, right? To be able to custom audience to say, anyone that opened up the lead ad or people that opened up the lead ad and became a lead, you can retarget them with different ads. So there's different capabilities and, and different fun ways to do it. And it has typically a higher conversion rate. We're seeing about 35% conversion rate on most of our Facebook lead ads. Nice, dude. And the information is also more accurate too. Right, exactly. You're, you're getting the name, email, and phone number directly from the social profile. And if you send people to a, a, a landing page, sometimes, um, you know, it might be a little bit more difficult. Does the page take longer to load? Um, you know, does, you know, does it have the uh, email or lead capture further down below the fold? Do they have to search for it, right? Do they get frustrated and bounce and leave? So yeah. those are things you're going to keep in mind. What about uh, Facebook? What I have, wait, there's a question. Phil Legree says, what about uh, the pop-ups? How do they look on Facebook Messenger? It's same as a lead ad, right? If, you've, if you're marketing on there. Oh, and you, uh, you might be talking about the placement, right? How does it look on um, if, if you're running a lead ad inside of different uh, Instagram or Facebook newsfeed, right? Um, Right now, I don't believe that it's inside of Messenger. So, uh, but Messenger is kind of a different animal all to itself, right? With chat bots and those kind of things. But as a placement, uh, Facebook lead ads really are just shown in Instagram um, and inside the Facebook mobile news feed. Cool. I think that was his question. I'm not sure though. Now, the other thing to really focus on is um, educating those people that have already put their house on the market and may have not had success. So expired listings for sell by owners, whatever that might be, there's a tremendous amount of opportunity with those people that have tried to sell their home or they're trying to do it on their own in this type of market, right? The shifting market where we're seeing that you can position yourself as the educator. And with Facebook, there's a really great uh, opportunity for you to really showcase that you are the authority figure within that. A lot of it is based on giving reciprocity, right? Giving them valuable information that they can actually use as a resource. And then they're gonna think of you whenever they try to execute it. Or if they get overwhelmed, they go, you know what? This person can be an overwhelming amount of great information. And it looks like they really know what they're doing. 
I should probably talk to them. You know, a lot of these people, they need to sell, but they also need to buy. So if you can focus on helping them by giving them information, and then if you're sending them to a landing page or if you just have a blog post, which a lot of people are starting to kind of use that as a strategy, you're not lead generating, you're just sending them straight to a blog post that they can download this information or it's just readily available just in a text format and you have a Facebook pixel to retarget those people directly afterwards. So they go there, they read about it, you upload maybe a custom audience in Facebook of all the expireds within your area, all the for sale by owners within your area, drive them there, let them read about it for, you know, for free, meaning that you're not charging them anything, you're not extracting their name, email, and phone number, just make it so easy, and then after that, retarget them with any kind of information that you think might be a benefit, right? Some sort of consultation or see the list of homes within their area and a Facebook lead ad, then get their information from there. Or a video, retarget them with a video about how well you know the market, giving them an update, a market update on how the market is shifting. And it's gonna to start to create this kind of compounding effect that you are the authority expert, right? You are the authority figure within your real estate market because you're educating them and odds are probably no one else really is. Everyone else is hounding them to get the listing, but no one else is actually educating them. So be the educator and really leverage Facebook custom audiences and retargeting with that kind of strategy. Yeah, and you can get the list of for sale by owners and expireds from companies like Land Voice or Espresso Agent. Uh, there's, a, there's a few companies out there that you can get them from. And if you don't know how to do the whole pixel thing, is that one of the free videos that you've got on your site? It is, yeah. If you just, yeah, on travistom.com, you just Google Facebook Pixel and there'll be a lot of different blog posts that come up and some video trainings that kind of dive deeper into how to get the Pixel, how to create one, how to install it, how to create a custom audience. Um, all, the, all that's there. Cool. And then we have a question from Sean. Policino, what's up, Sean? Uh, what's your thoughts on the right copy in the ad to get the customer to want to call us in the moment that they're looking at the ad? Mm, that's a good, it's a good question. Um, getting them to actually take specific action right there to call you. A lot of the times, you know, that's, that's toward the bottom of the funnel and we work in full funnel formats. So you guys can probably see my, my poster here, tofu, mofu, bofu behind me, which is top of funnel, middle of funnel, bottom of funnel. Um, in terms of you know Facebook ad campaigns, when you have to think of the awareness level of the consumer, and if their awareness level is really low, meaning they're not really aware of who you are, they're not aware of your service or your product, the odds that they're actually going to call you is, is really, really low. So you need to build this affinity, you need to build this bond and relationship with them over a period of time through ad retargeting. And that creates this, this feeling of, well, that they know you, they know your sound of, the, of your voice, right? they know your face, they know your name, they know what you're all about. So by the time they actually do see another ad of positioning you to uh, invite them to call you, whether it be a strategy call, whatever it might be, then it's gonna be a little bit more of a warmer engagement and they're more willing to connect with you. So it can't be to a cold audience. It really has to be to a warmer audience that you've warmed up through a series of retargeting campaigns, giving them great information. So if they're looking at an ad in that moment in time, after you've warmed them up and you've given them specific information that they identify that you are the person that gave them that information, then you're going to have a higher chance of it. Um, I would say, you know, do something along the lines of uh, something like using call action um, if you guys have uh, talk, heard of, you spoke with Jesse Bedoin, call action, having a text, you know, uh, call to action in there um, <laughs> is probably going to be a little bit more of a, of a higher engagement versus a phone call. You can use a Facebook lead ad that do have an option where you go through the Facebook lead ad and at the very end, instead of sending them to a website, you can then have them call your phone. And it's, it's a feature that was rolled out about five, six months ago. Um, that everyone probably should have access now too. So instead of putting in your URL, just put in your phone number and use a call to action that says, you know, click the call now or set up your call. But those types of, those types of uh, uh, ad copy is, has to be really specific to whatever your top of funnel um, ad was, right? So whatever, whatever it might be, if they want to set up a 
strategy call on how to sell their home for more than it's worth. Um, you know, whatever, whatever it might be. So it's a little tricky, but play around with it. And just remember that you got to warm up that audience with some specific type of content first. Well, I think also you get a lot of marketers out there that just don't understand. This is what I was talking to Sean yesterday about that don't understand the real estate world. So they think that the copy that they create that's super sexy looking, but really has no practicality will work and it doesn't, uh, right. it has no, no effect. So just remember it's it, people, people in the psychology, they're looking always for the best deal out there for the best looking home. And if you stick to those things then you know that the ads you create, which is least expensive homes, fixer, foreclosure, short sales, you try to attract people using that, it usually works more than the other way. Exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. Make sure it makes sure that it's hyper relevant to them and that it's, it's easy, right? Because people are inherently lazy, you know, not, yeah. not to, not to uh, offend people, but it's just the truth. You got to make it really, really easy for them. So, you know, click the button to call or text to call. Um, you know, text this message to download a list of this. And then typically we're looking for micro conversions. Um, like when you're, you know, trying to attract sellers, a great strategy is a market update. Um, you know, download this uh, market update for all the homes that have sold within the past six months. You then deliver a market update, right, via email to them. And you text or follow up with an email saying, thank you so much for downloading our, our market report. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, um, I know some of the data might be confusing to read, but I do this every day. By the way, uh, I'm creating seven different custom home valuations for some past clients of mine within the same market area. Would you mind if I created one for you? So we're looking for those micro conversions, right? Low hanging fruit to get them in. So the barrier to entry has been really low. And then position yourself with the real, right? The real uh, agenda, which is that you want to then to give them a custom valuation and to get into their living room to see what updates have they done. So we kind of think about it in that kind of format, micro conversions that lead to a macro conversion. Okay. And just so people are clear, should we expect our retargeting campaigns to be six to eight months long? What do you, what do you suggest here? You, you know, it depends on, on what the top of the funnel type of ad that you're using. If you're using a Facebook lead ad, you only have 90 days to retarget those individuals from the moment that they clicked and opened up the Facebook lead ad. You have 90 days to put them into a custom audience. So that's three months of retargeting those individuals. If you're using a website, that's 365 days. Um, if you're using video, 365 days. So, you know, it just depends on, on what you're using that the behavioral action was at the beginning to put them into the custom audience. Ideally, what we've seen, because we've generated over 75,000 uh, leads from Facebook, Instagram, and Messenger. Um, and after 75,000 leads, what we've seen is that a good majority of these leads are going to convert within the four to six to seven month uh, range. So yeah. you really want to make sure you're hitting them on all those kind of markers. Um, if you know, we've spoken to companies like, um, and the pleasure of my team has been working or worked with some of these companies, uh, like loan Depot, um, and Quicken loans, and they, you know, spend millions of dollars buying leads. Now with Facebook leads, they pay top dollar. We're talking about, you know, hundreds of dollars. They pay top dollar for the leads that are, older, right? The leads that are six months, eight months, 12 months old, they're willing to pay more for those leads than the leads that you generated yesterday. Now, the reason why is because those leads are, are seasoned, right? They're ready to harvest because they have at some point in, you know, six, seven months ago, they had some behavioral action where they raised their hand and said, I'm interested in buying, selling, refinancing, whatever it might be. And Facebook is so smart with this algorithm that it can predict what those people are going to do in the future. But a good majority of agents just don't really have the patience, right? Yeah. And, and we're all kind of like that. We all kind of give up a little bit too early because we think that, well, they didn't respond to my first three text messages. They didn't respond to my five emails. But we know that they're in a decision cycle that is a pretty big life stage. So they need to be nurtured with retargeting and email and text messages for that long stretch of time. 
And who's really been able to figure that out are some of those bigger loan companies that say, we know that those older leads are worth a lot of money now because they're going to take action because they, they, you know, they indicated six, seven, eight months ago. So really strive for a minimum of six months and probably a maximum of a, a year to two years. So at what stage do you introduce a call to action? Bofu? Well, you know, I, I, I suggest that a call to action really should go, go out. I mean, we, we've, we've tested these ads, you know, from bottom of the funnel kind of call to action ads. And, you know, a good majority of the call to actions work much better in text messages and emails. Um, and then in sometimes video uh, ver versus like an ad saying, call now, right? Take action now. It really is about getting them as a lead and striking up a conversation via text message and email. And then using a priming and reminding methodology, you know, in ad retargeting that they keep seeing your face and name again and again, over and over for several months, you know, <clears throat> they see your ad all the time. That's going to create this compounding effect when they see a text and an email from you. It, it's more hyper relevant. They, they, they go, Oh yeah, I've seen Tristan, you know, for like the 30th time. And I know that his, you know, I just saw his email come in. Um, it, it's going to, it's going to basically make you stand out a little bit more. It creates the frequency illusion that you're everywhere. Cool, bro. All right. New construction ads. This is, you know, one of those things where we have to think about the, the current market that we're in and, and moving into the next several months. New home builders are always continuing to create new subdivisions and build new homes. And if, if you are having a difficult time getting listings or, you know, getting buyers, new construction ads are a great way to really leverage the existing new inventory that needs to sell without having to then win inventory and then without having to then really search for buyers first properties that you know 500 agents control you're talking to one builder so what you can do is we've had several clients who have done this with where they've actually talked to a builder and said i'm going to send you uh several leads over the next several months and i would like to use uh your inventory in an ad and if you have any extra rebates or anything that we can offer we'd like to use that as an incentive right to get people to actually will, you know, uh, give you their information, become a lead. That's so what you do is package the rebate and, and then be able to say, you know, uh, there's a limited time offer. So we're creating some urgency in here. And that way, I mean, if someone sees this ad and they say it's limited time and you can get up to $5,000 in buyer rebates, odds are they're not going to scroll past, right? If they're currently in the market for this, and we know that a lot of people, they really enjoy new construction homes. So you tell the new construction builder, you tell the sales team, I'm going to send you an email every time I get a lead, I'm gonna give you their name and their information. So that way you guys can put it in a file for me and say that if that lead walks in, we can reference that lead and get their information, know that that's attached to you as that agent. So you can participate within, you know, within the sale. Cool. I like that idea, dude. That's a yeah, good idea. Works. It's worked really, really well. Or um, if you don't even want to go to the construction site, you could be like, use this as a lead ad because these are lead ads, right? You're doing yes. lead ads. Um, you're going to get their information as soon as they click the button. You can send them to the, the, their website and just hit them up right after. Right. Exactly. And, and you know, there's certain things that you can do in terms of the follow-up to say, um, you know, just wanted, wanted to get in touch with you to make sure that we can secure that $5,000 buyer rebate for you because it is expiring soon. So is there a time that we can set up to talk about your goals and what kind of new construction home you want so we can make sure that we can secure that for you? Or you can use certain things like uh, Leadsbridge. Leadsbridge actually allows you to use, um, Leadsbridge is kind of like Zapier where mm -hmm. you use a Facebook lead ad to uh, send the leads to Leadsbridge. Leadsbridge then send them to your CRM, but you can also have Leadsbridge send out a coupon. So you can create a buyer rebate coupon inside of Leadsbridge with you know, basically their information to say, hey, congratulations, you got this. To redeem it, you, know, you need to go ahead and uh, give us a call so we can register you um, and, and so you up with, uh, with our sales team. So the end part of this, the conversion part of it gives you a lot of leverage, right? Because there's urgency inside the ad. Yeah, dude, I agree with you. Alina has a question. 
She says, I thought the new Facebook rules or policies prevents us from uploading lists that aren't directly attributed to us. No. Um, you know, I know there's several kind of, you know, there's a lot of information kind of going around about that. Um, but when you upload a custom audience now inside the Facebook ad manager, you're basically given three different, um, three different choices to identify where the source of the information came from. One directly from your customers. Uh, one, uh, choose another source that says it's from partners. Um, and then another is basically uh, a data source, right? Third party data source that you got it from. If you're getting it from like Land Voice or other companies like that, it's a third party data source where you upload that. If it's your friends and family list and, and past clients, then that's gonna be your customer list. Um, so you know, there's different options to, to uh, identify what it is. All Facebook really is looking for is for you to just identify the source of those custom audiences. Um, so no, it's not, you know, there's, there's no constraints on uh, saying that you can't upload these custom audiences. Cool, dude. So Keith Bonham has a question here on this. Uh, yes. Now that the likely to buy targeting option is gone, how are we targeting these ads so they are actually going to people that are in the market to buy a home? Great question. So, and, and um, what the person that just asked the question, what they're referencing is um, that third party data, partner categories, was announced to be removed in March. And that was from the Cambridge Analytica scandal that happened. Um, and so Facebook quickly you know, made sure that they were ensuring different things to create more of a tighter privacy. Um, and a better user experience. And part of that, they said, you know what, let's go ahead and take away partner categories, which is linked to third party data like Axiom and Epsilon and Experian, some of those other data companies that aggregate uh, an enormous amount of information. Um, so with that, they were, they're removing those and they've been slowly removing them from Europe to Canada to then the US. And then now this month and the next month, they're finally taking those, those out, right? Homeowners and likely to move some of that targeting interests. Um, what we've seen over the past several months since March to now is when they announced it in March, we, in all of our campaigns, um, we removed using any third party data. <clears throat> so we only used first party data and then we used different um, custom audiences, lookalike audience, those kind of things. We, saw a lower cost per lead, a higher quality of lead. And, you know, the data that we used to use was a little bit more expensive, right? When you used likely to move or income or homeowner targeting. And it always it was a little finicky. We didn't always have the best results. So, you know, it was a little bit, well, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And any kind of advertising platform can be like that. But likely to move, really, you want to take a custom audience that you have of your current buyers. If you have a list of current buyers or sellers that you're working with, um, and try and, you know, try and make sure it's a healthy, robust list of their name, email, phone number, um, city, zip code, those kind of things. Upload that as a custom audience, and then create that as a lookalike audience. When you create a lookalike audience from that, Facebook is gonna take your original custom audience list as a seed list, and then they're gonna create a lookalike audience. And what that does is Facebook then will go through their entire uh, database and use their algorithm to find 2,000 different data points, right? 2,000 different key attributes about those individuals and try and do the data match of what are their current life stages? What is their income? What are they, what are they doing, right? What are the key attributes that they can find? Now they'll exclude the seed list. You get a lookalike audience which is gonna be a national list. It's gonna be around probably 1.5 to 2 million people. You're then gonna take that and, and basically scrunch it down to your zip codes or geolocation to your market area. And then you're gonna find like kind individuals, whatever life stage they might in. Be in. So hopefully that kind of answers some of that. Totally, dude. I think you answered, you answered it fully. <laughs> All right, one of the things that We've been doing inside of our uh, Facebook coaching and training program uh, that we just kicked off about two weeks ago that it's been, been a lot of fun. And I suggest that everyone do this. And if you guys can follow along uh, with us, please do. 
it's a video series challenge and it's an eight week challenge. And you know, with the market shifting, video is a great way to really get your brand message across, right? Control the narrative of your brand and your local market. Really become the digital mayor, right, of your market. So there's a few, there's a few kind of hacks with this. Um, but part of it is that there's, you know, there's different topics. So you could be at an open house, do a Facebook live or a video that you're at an open house and you know, give people, you know, give a sneak peek of the home, um, home staging. If you're staging a home, walk through the home as they're staging, saying this is my staging crew. By the way, you know, one of the reasons why we stage homes is they sell at X amount percentage more, they sell X percentage amount faster, whatever it might be or give market updates. Right now, there's a lot of uncertainty in the market for sellers because they're wondering why is it taking so long for my house to sell and they're not getting probably a lot of answers. So if you can be the authority figure and be the digital mayor of saying, you know what, the market is shifting and this is what's happening. This is what the outlook is, this is what to look for. That is gonna be uh, something that's gonna resonate with your audience. So there's different things that you can, you can do with all these different topics, but the, the way you need to follow it is, post that video to your business page. And hopefully everyone here has a business page because this is what you really wanna do. Post it to your business page, then from your business page, share it to your personal page. And then take, uh, there's some details here that, that uh, you know, I would need to show you guys, but I uh, can't right now, but you'd need to take the same ad ID for that, or you just take that video and run that video to your sphere of influence, right? To your custom audience of your friends and family and past clients and your past leads and your current leads. So you're gonna run a page post engagement, uh, PPE, uh, to the, that audience to really get engagement, people to watch it, and then email the video. So you can go to the video uh, or the post, click on the timestamp on that. It's gonna open up to a separate page that has the, the URL string, the dedicated URL to that post. So you take that URL and then you email all of your past leads, your sphere of influence and say, hey, I just created a new video about this new community that's just opening up, uh, thought you might be interested. You email them a link to that video so then they go to Facebook and they can comment on it, they can watch it, right? They can like it, they can share it. And what happens is when people do that, then if they comment on that post, it's going to show up then also as you know, the same comment is going to show up inside of uh, the ad that you're running to, this, to your sphere of influence and past leads. It's going to create this kind of compounding effect that you're everywhere. Run it for about 10 to 12 days and then rinse and repeat. Do the same thing with the next video. Do this for eight weeks. And every time I do something like this, I get people that send me messages in Facebook Messenger that post, you know, they basically share it and say, hey, can we talk? They comment on it and they email me back, say, hey, I got a few ideas. Can we, can we meet up? The same thing works with real estate, right? So you just do this for eight weeks, rinse and repeat. The key thing is consistency. So those next eight weeks, everyone is going to see you, your friends and family. You're going to stir up referrals. You're going to stir up buyers. And when, you know, things change with the market, you're going to be top of mind. Right? You're going to be the one that they think of with anything that comes up with real estate, any questions that they might have. Got it. Well, I'm going to add something to you, bro, because this is really good. But what I find agents have a challenge with is consistency throughout the board on everything. Yeah. Uh, so what I recommend for agents that are going to do this is to create a calendar where you're going to be talking about different things every week, or if it's going to be once a month, you could do it once a month too. But the point is, map it out so that you don't have to second guess what you're going to do next. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Have your content really kind of mapped out. And, you know, if, if you mess up in the video, um, it, it, can, it can feel like you, you know, messed up a lot and everyone's, you know, going to judge you, whatever it might be. Um, we're all humans. You know, I do a lot of video and there, there's pauses, there's ums, there's ahs it just makes you more human, more authentic. And I think in a world where everything is so hyper curated, where you have the Kardashians of the world and, and, you know, Instagram, these things that make you feel maybe a little bit uh, insecure. Well, people really crave authenticity and they crave people that are actually like themselves, like you. So don't be afraid to mess up. 
Don't be afraid of the ums and the ahs. Just show yourself, you know, be that, that person that they know and that they love because um, it's going to resonate with them on a deeper level and have a higher impact. Uh, you know, but one of the things that you can also do is talk to a lender, interview a lender about what are the new uh, changes, you know, what are the new loan packages out there, right? Kind of demystify what people can or can't do and remove the anxiety from it and be the one that actually does that. You know, there's something to say with Oprah and the Oprah effect of her interviewing influential people that positions her as that authority figure. And you can do the same thing with local shop owners. Um, you know, different, different lenders or title officers or uh, new construction developments. Really be able to get other people to jump on in the video and use, you know, use them as your content. Very good point, dude. Question here. Somebody's referring back to what you said. Did I understand you correctly that if you got the lead from a lead in lead ad, you can only remarket to that lead for 90 days? Well, uh, yes. So when you create a custom audience for a Facebook lead ad, there's a maximum number of days that you can, you can have that person in a custom audience. So if, if they, uh, day one, you run the ad, um, or, or, you know, whatever, whenever they interact with the ad, their 90 days starts that they're going to be in your custom audience. Then, you know, at day 91, they're ejected out of that custom audience. So, that's why we work with in funnel type of formats because if you have a Facebook lead ad and you've generated, let's say 300 leads, um, those 300 leads, you have a 90 day window. Well, then you can re, uh, retarget those leads. Let's say maybe a month later with a video and whoever watched then three seconds of that video, right? Cause you're, you're running that video just to the people, just those 300 leads you generated. Whoever watched three seconds of that video, you can create a custom audience of those for 365 days, right? For a year and then so on and so on and so on. So, you know, there's retargeting stacking, there's push along funnels, there's uh, delayed sequence funnels. There's all sorts of ways that you can just carry that lead from basically ad creative to ad creative to ad creative to extend the lifetime of that lead. Now you can also then take and download those leads the easiest way and then upload them again to Facebook as a custom audience. And then you have them for a very, very long time. So it's, uh, yeah, so don't get too hung up on, on the time frame there. There's, there's different hacks and tricks that you can do with it. Cool. All right. So, you know, follow, you know, follow the money. And in markets like this, there, there's a huge opportunity for investors because there's going to be homes that aren't selling. And you're going to have some REOs and some foreclosures that are going to start to stir up. And I believe that market is really actually starting to kind of heat up more and more. Mm -hmm. And that's an opportunity for you to really follow the money and go where the bigger players are that are the investment groups or the investors that have the 10 to 15 million to spend where they are actively looking to buy. And you know, they're in the market to actually just really get not just one listing, not just one or two homes, but many right? Because they need to turn this over. If you yeah. win an investor client, that's one of those clients that you can really have for right several years because they're constantly in the business. This is their, their lifeblood. Their oxygen is to buy and sell and buy and sell or buy and hold whatever it might be. So go after the investors and use a Facebook lead ad to show them all the foreclosed homes for sale. You know, position yourself in front of them and really get those investors, right? That's a great way to really kind of uh, navigate through some of this market here. Dude, I would add to that, uh, to your video challenge, as soon as you have the list of people that are liking this or that have downloaded or, or however you have this set up, put them into a custom audience and then retarget them with messages of you in front of foreclosures or homes that are short sales. It's like, hey, I'm at another foreclosure here. This one's probably going to go pretty quick, but look, I got a list of them, so let me know. Exactly. Right. Exactly. That's, and, and that's you know, that, that priming and reminding effect of you're priming them with this and then remind them again and again afterwards that you have access to all those foreclosures, right? That you are the one that has the key. Um, Cause you know, we're, we're, we're consuming an amazing amount of data every day. So you need to remind people on a consistent basis that you, you have access. So try and use some strategy like this. Also, then another way is once you start to generate those investors, 
you might then also want to then generate your own listings for those investors. So using something like getting all cash offer today on your house, we buy houses fast. This is once you develop that investor database, start to then go after um, the people that are probably going to need to sell their house for cash. There's a few different ways that you can do this. You can run a, um, we call it kind of like a carpet bombing or blockbuster strategy where you have a video that you run to a massive audience of homeowners or people within the area. Whoever watches, let's say 50% or 70% of that video, retarget them with this kind of Facebook lead ad. So that video could be something along the lines of, um, need to sell your house soon, you know, it's struggling with payments, whatever it might be. Don't make it predatory, but you know, make sure that you are educating them that there's options. And use that video to create a custom audience of people that watched 50%, 70%, because that's a behavioral action that if they watch that long, they're probably in that position and that you need to give them a solution. So we target them directly with something like this. That's a good one, dude. That's like those yellow signs on the freeway, off the freeway. That's right, like, yeah. Buy houses. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool, dude. We buy houses for cash. So those, those are the greatest strategies that you can put in place right now. And, you know, we start to navigate through this market with a little bit more education on how and become a leader within that world. So if you, you know, if you start to just even chip away at two of these strategies, you're going to be far, uh, far ahead of the game than those that aren't. Let's see if uh, we have any questions because I can bring some people on to talk with us here live. Let's, yeah, see, that'd be great. let's see if anybody wants to ask some questions. All right. Question time, everybody. While uh, Travis drinks a drink and we take a look at his lab coat agent shirt. Thank you, Travis. I live in the desert, man. It's hot. Dude, I don't, and it's hot. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what questions we have here. Let's see. I'm going to go into lab coats to see if we have any questions there, too. Uh, any? Oh, yeah, they do. Hold on. It takes a while to load it and to scroll through the questions. I think we have more questions on the group than we do in the in this webinar section of it. All right, Alina is quite doing great here at questions. Does length of video matter or even if it's one minute long, it, would it still work? What do you suggest? Yeah, that, that's, that's a great question, Alina. Um, so Facebook, they, they suggest, officially Facebook suggests 15 seconds, um, but it's difficult to get a lot of content in, right? To explain what it is, depending on the awareness level of the consumer within 15 seconds. Um, now, 15 seconds video can be done really well to capture someone's attention and interest, just to showcase your brand and, and core message to generate a lead. But when you need more persuasive copy or more, you know, more persuasive, um, uh, video for the awareness level to bring those people in, you're probably going to need you know, something more like two to four minutes. Um, you know, and <clears throat> video is kind of like long email copy in a way. The, you know, the, there's, there's always been this argument of, uh, should you write a short email or really long email? So it's the same thing with like a sales page. Um, there's, there's several people that I know that have done these A and B split tests in the con, you know, optimization conversion kind of world where one of them made over $700,000 from an email that was 4,000 words long. So the long copy really kind of comes down to, well, who is going to watch that length of a video? Um, the people that are interested, right? The people that you're directly speaking to are the ones that are going to watch that long of a video. Uh, because it resonates with them. However, the first five to 10 seconds, you really have to make a statement of what it is you're talking about, what is the pain point, right? What is the topic and how are you gonna dive into it? Because um, everyone's into digital snacking, right? And that's what Instagram is kind of all about, which is just digital snacking to see, you know, 10, five, 15 seconds or something. But the pain points um, is where you really need to hit within the first five, 10 seconds and then go, you know, go into it. So but I, I, don't, I don't suggest going longer typically than five minutes if, if you're trying to pitch something. 
I think people are into digital pigging out too. <laughs> yeah, that's right. No, they, they like cat videos a lot. So, <laughs> dude, you and I were at Facebook and they, they told us uh, you have three seconds, right. right? There's a three second rule and that's three seconds to engage these people that are looking at your video. So what would be something that we can do to really engage the people up front in these three seconds? What are your suggestions? If, if you have the capability to have any kind of uh, text overlay, right, you know, in the video or some sort of image, um, that's something I've started to do is kind of throw up images next to me in, in videos within the first three seconds. So it captures their attention and interest. It's kind of, it, it's pattern interruption a little bit. So if you can have a text overlay, or if you can have uh, what's working really well are those blocks at the bottom of the video and the top of the video, those blocks that have like yeah, the question. Right, yeah, a border, exactly. And it says what the video is about, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, so how, you know, how to sell your house for more than it's worth right up here, you know? Uh, you know, is, you know, can you do that? Question mark. That's something that it gets a lot of attention right from there. Um, another is having kind of a, a slight fake out thumbnail where you have a thumbnail that it might be a, a, a different image, you know, of you doing something that might be some color contrast. There's one I saw the guy that's crawling on the beach coming out of the water. And it's like a nanosecond. And then it goes to him in a conference room talking about what he's doing. So, Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's different ways to do it, but yeah, there's the subtle, subtle things like that really help. All right. I would say just get a kitten and a baby. Just, to start <laughs> just get, yeah, that, that those are readily available. <laughs> um, you can get them pretty much anywhere. <laughs> kitten and a baby. Uh, Sean's got a question. Is there a widget or plugin to link the live MLS IDX feed and embed it into the ad? Into the ad, um, no. I mean, there there is, you know, there's. Uh, I think he's talking product about product ads. He's talking about like Dare. You know how Dare, yeah, brings in the whole uh, like a catalog, right? Like a, yeah, dynamic feed of it. That's 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 going to be a little bit more technical. Um, you know, companies like Y uh, you know, using dynamic product ads. Um, there's not a lot of. There's not any kind of plugins that would allow you to really do that yet, just yeah. because IDX and MLS is such an old archaic format. Um, and then you have Facebook, which is just, a, you know, the leading edge of cutting technology and the leader. They want to control everything too, man. I, I doubt that they're going to open a catalog product like that to other companies that can have a plugin. Yeah, not, not yet. I don't, I, I think that's going to be the next disruption, which is being able to open up, um, the MLS, you know, IDX data to be able to really kind of, you know, do a lot of amazing things with it. But right now it's so constricted that it's really difficult uh, to just implement that, you know. Yeah. What's a minimum daily budget do you suggest for a lead ad, buddy? Depends all on the audience size. So if the golden rule of thumb is $10 a day per 100,000 people within that audience. A lot of the times we see that people say, you know, I'm, 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 I ran a Facebook lead ad or I ran a, ran a Facebook ad, whatever it is. And, and it sucked, you know, nothing happened. <laughs> Cause you suck. <laughs> and, then, and then we go in and, you know, we see that they're targeting uh, 1.9 million people and they're only spending $10 or $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10 or $15 a day. And, and they're targeting like people that like the Cowboys and, Dude. you know, it's kind of all over the place. So, you know, not to get too deep into it, but Facebook is an auction and bidding process. So keep in mind, you're entering into a blind auction. And when you go into the auction, Facebook is going to take whoever is bidding the highest, but the auction process is constantly going. So even after you bid and go to the auction, they're going to say, how does the audience like your ad? How do they like the ad image? And is the click-through rate high enough for us to say that the user base really enjoys it and they value this for us to feed it up to more people? And that's called BEAR, right? So the Facebook algorithm is known as BEAR. It's uh, bidding, estimated action rates, and then relevancy. Um, so just keep in mind that you need to bid an appropriate amount to the size of the audience. So if you're targeting 1.9 million people in your audience, you should be spending around $150 a day. 
if you have 150,000, you're okay spending somewhere around 10 to $15 a day. Dude, nice. And so here's something I'm gonna say. What I've been noticing with ads, lead ads, is that we're no longer budgeting a daily amount. We're just saying, hey, I, I wanna spend $200 within 30 days and i'm finding that i'm getting a much much better result with that why do you think so yeah so that's called life using the lifetime budget so there's daily budget and then there's lifetime budget and and lifetime budget is less restrictive and so anytime um so when you use daily budget and, and it depends on you know basically preference um daily budget you can control your budget a little bit more you can start to scale it um you know by saying oh i want to spend you know a little bit more money on, on the next couple of days, um, but it's restrictive. So it throttles it a little bit. Lifetime budget basically gives Facebook access to say, spend it how you want. Um, now it, it's, it's, little, it's a little bit more um, open in terms of how it's gonna spend it. So if you have, well, daily budget has a peak, right? So let's say you're generating 10 leads that day and you're only spending $10 a day. Well, you are gonna hit a cap at some point because you generated 10 leads and you spent a dollar per lead and so it can't go more, but let's say that you could have within the next then in an ad then kind of basically turned off um, that day it is not serving out to more people because you hit your daily budget at 6 p.m. But from 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. there's more opportunity because there's more engagement so a lifetime budget will say 6 p.m. on, we'll go ahead and serve it out to more people because of the engagement that it, that's yeah. taking place. Um, Just be so prepared with, your, with the lifetime budget to know that you're probably not even going to come close to making it last the 30 days. Right, yeah. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be a lot shorter. But, you know, Travis is right. That peak hours, then you're going to take advantage of that rather than it shutting off. And you never know. Right. And the beauty with, with lifetime budget too, is that you can do what's called day parting. So you can say, I only want this ad to run on a specific time. I want it to run from uh, 5 PM to uh, midnight only through Thursday to Sunday versus okay. daily budget, right? Your daily budget, you're going to run it all the time. Um, so it, it's less restrictive and the algorithm basically likes to have a little bit more freedom to serve it out. And the algorithm is getting smarter and smarter every day. Um, so yeah, that's, that's, that's why. Dude, I agree. Uh, let's see. Uh, Doris says there was a part, another part to the, her question, but I'm only getting the second part. Can he recommend a decent company to work through for lead? Yeah. Uh, Travis does it. Travis, do you do that still, bro? We do. Yes. Yeah. So, so we, you know, we have an advertising agency um, where we build these campaigns. We typically build larger, more robust campaigns. Um, you know, we, what, we do what's your this. website? I'll put it on, on this right now. Sure. So, so it's, that's under construction. Uh, the elevated RAM. Uh, you, suck, right. dude. you suck. Officially. I'm joking. Well, uh, did they go to elevated REM? Well, no, they, they can just go to travistom.com and, and under services, we kind of, we, we'll, we have uh, agency and then we have our, our coaching and training. Uh, but the Elevated REM website is, is uh, not finished yet. We're, we're doing a full rebrand. So Okay, I'm doing bear, bear I posted it up on both. Tra did you know travistom.com rhymes? Did you know that? I'm sure you did. TravisTom.com. You're right. You can yeah, make a little song, dude. TravisTom.com. <laughs> That's my jingle. Anyway, I can do a 15 second ad. I love that, dude. Anyway, Alina says, besides Jesse, I think she's referring to Jesse Bedoin. Yes. Uh, what's the best way to engage with the leads? Call within five minutes, text within five minutes, so forth. Uh, I'm going to chime in on that one. Travis. Yeah. Uh, I suggest that you you have a system, a CRM in place that, that will allow you to do that by text, by voicemail drop, by email, by video, as many avenues as possible. Sierra Interactive has all that built into it. Uh, it's not that expensive, it's $350 a month. You can do Commission Zinc. They also have some of that built in. You can do mass texting with them, but they're 1,500 a month. 
And the least expensive one a month, but doesn't have the voicemail drops is Lion Desk. They're $25 a month. They're probably the most affordable one that makes sense. They also have mass texting, but I would also include Alina. If you don't have an ISA that's calling these leads and that's nurturing them for you at a long, long term, I would have one either agentology, which calls them five days, the first five days, or I'd get somebody from my out desk to nurture the leads for you. And somebody from my out desk is going to call you, cost you $10 an hour, but you can say, Hey, look, all of my database, it's time to nurture them. Right. That any yeah. suggestions, Travis, yeah. anything I missed? No, you, you, you hit, you hit, you hit them all. I, I think that um, it, there's two kind of core things with, so with lion desk, um, you, it integrates directly with Facebook lead ads. So you don't have to have Zapier or Leadsbridge. You just go into their actual dashboard and, and sync it up inside of there. Um, and then with call action, what's really cool is that you can do data append. So when you generate a lead, you can see it actually you know, scrubs the data and says, is this person a homeowner? Um, what's their income? You know, it gives you a little bit more information basically about them. So you can kind of see where, you know, where's the priority with this lead? Should I call them because they're a homeowner? Um, it gives you a little bit more of a, of a background. But all of, the, all of those platforms, Tristan has used every single one. Um, so he knows uh, a lot about it. And yeah, there's a lot of different options. Yeah, dude. Some good questions. Let me see. I think uh, everyone says, thank you. Uh, we are now people's heroes. Yes. That's what, that's what we were shooting for from the very beginning. I'm glad that we accomplished that. Thank you, Alina. Uh, Travis, do you want to add anything, man? Um, you know, you, you don't know what you don't know. Uh, so I, I think that there's a lot of uncertainty and kind of myths and, and rumors going around with uh, all the changes with Facebook. Um, so before you buy into some other agent's post on what they said they can or can't do, please ask an expert, right? Um, you know, we, we spend, you know, over 40,000 a month on Facebook. Um, and Tristan and I, uh, you know, go to Facebook headquarters and actually meet with the Facebook real estate team. So, you know, we have access uh, to exactly what's happening. Um, so if you guys are concerned about anything or have any questions or you're not quite sure if you can or can't do that, please reach out to me or Tristan um, inside of, of Lab Coats and we'll give you the absolute truth of what you can or can't do. You know, we're not going to sugarcoat it for you because it's, it, there's so many things that are changing and they're moving fast. Um, but just know from our perspective that these are all good things that are changing. And there's tremendous amount of opportunity that's opening up because when there's doubt and when there's uncertainty in these kind of situations, uh, there are people that are not going to run ads, right? Your competition, your local market is going to be confused. They're going to struggle when they create a campaign. They're not going to exactly know what they should or shouldn't do and, and all the changes that have taken place. So they're going to give up. That's your opportunity to invest in yourself and educate yourself and know the right steps to take and build your strategy and take over their market share. So just, just keep that in mind as you guys start to kind of move in more and more in, into the, the Facebook world. Dude, good point. I love it. Uh, Alina says she wants a Tofu Mofu Bofu t-shirt with your wife's artwork. She wants yes. it on, she wants it on Amazon. <laughs> that, that, yeah, we'll get to that soon. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Remember, be happy and kick ass. Yes. Thank you, everyone.